2022 school committee meeting. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Um, I do believe we do not have anybody signed up for public comment, but I'm going to pause because we have standing room only in the room. Okay. Meeting is being recorded on SMAC for future viewing. Thank you, Anita. Um, so the next item on the agenda is the superintendent update. Thank you, Mrs. Gropey, members of the committee. I wanted to begin by talking a little bit about our vaccination rates. We've been monitoring the situation regarding vaccination rates very, very closely. And you may know you hear about some communities where they have been able to lift the mask mandate. That's only because they've been able to hit 80% of vaccination rate in a particular building. And so we've been watching it very, very closely. And right now at Stoughton High School, we're at 70%. So you have to take all the students and all the staff together and then figure out who's vaccinated. Um, at the middle school with everybody in, uh, students and staff were at 48%. And then as you can imagine, the elementary schools are a little bit lower because those students have only been able to get the vaccination um, recently. Um, but just for the sake of clarity, at Daw, we're at 33 percent, at the Gibbons, 30, Wilkins, 25 percent, at the South, 41, and at the Hanson, 38. And so we're, we're watching this very, very closely. We're, we're certainly looking at everything and looking at the trends. And I will keep this updated uh, at every meeting, and we'll make sure that we're, we're current with that information. But I think it's important for the community to be aware um, that we are watching it closely, and that I'm very, very yeah. aware of, of those rates. Um, the second thing I have is it's time to look at our triennial plan again. We're in year three of our triennial plan. And so next year would be year one of a new triennial plan. And it's time to start putting that together. So over the next couple of weeks, I'll be putting together a working group to begin looking at the triennial plan and putting together a new draft for the school committee's consideration. And, and we'll begin looking at that. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention is that we are beginning to move toward a central registration process. One of the things that um, we don't often talk about is when new families come into Stoughton, what does that mean? You know, if you have two or three students in two or three buildings, you have to check into each building, register in each building. If English is a second language or there are other concerns, um, often it's, it's several stops before you're officially registered. And so we're looking to really stand up a central registration office that would allow for one stop for a family to come in. We would be able to verify documentation, verify all of, all of that situation in a, in a very consistent manner. And so we're really looking to start that up uh, relatively quickly and help all the, student, all the families when they come in to register have an opportunity to, to register in a, in a very seamless fashion. So we're just starting that conversation now. Mr. Ford is very excited about it, and he and I have had some conversations, and, and we're, we're really starting to stand that up. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention, we hinted at it at the last meeting, is for this year, for next year, we want to give our seventh graders the opportunity to take Portuguese at the middle school. So we have an opportunity this year um, with the teaching staff that we have to be able to offer it as an option along with French and Spanish next year when the students do sign-ups. And so with uh, Mr. Colantonio here, I can, I can announce that we are able to add that to our roster for next year for the seventh grade. So we're very excited about that opportunity um, and we'll see how it goes. And then the last thing that I had on, on my list right now is we did complete uh, the residency verification process that we had started um, back in the fall. Um, and we identified some families that weren't living in Stoughton. The, the situation it did its, its job, and we are certainly um, keeping that system going to make sure that we're always verifying residency here in Stoughton. So a couple of things today. I'm very excited to be here, and uh, thank you very much. Does anybody have any questions for Dr. Rabb? Thank you, Dr. Rabb, for the update. So the next item on the agenda is um, Project 351 Acknowledgements. We have um, Senator Mr. Timulty here. We're glad to have him. And we have Mr. Colantonio, the middle school principal, and all of the um, wonderful students that have been nominated. Excuse me. I'm sorry to interrupt. Yeah. Um, student representative update. Is it on here? Skip, oh, skipped I skipped it. it. Do, you want, do you want to go before them? or? Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm going to go to the student rep update. Thank you, Katie. Kina. You're welcome. 
I know Gary. Yeah. Thank you for having me. She's my child. <laughs> <laughs> this is Morgan Grilby. <laughs> okay, go ahead. We just recently had our night where the eighth graders came up to the high school, and all of the teachers in the building were very happy to see the upcoming class and very happy to hear how excited people were to come to the new high school. Our seniors just hosted their Oscar night for their class, which was very amazing for them. They had a great time. And we are starting to get into our class selections for our upcoming school year. And we have our packets of different courses we can take in our beginning to make those selections on February 18th. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Katie. You're welcome. Pina, Anokia. Stop it. OK. All right, so now, Mr. Colantoni, without further ado, I will hand it to you for the Project 351 acknowledgments. Well, hello, uh, members of the school committee. Uh, hello, uh, backup students who I see every day. Um, and guests, the crowd behind me, Senator Timothy. It's, uh, I don't know, one of my favorite nights of the year. I get to talk about Project 351, a wonderful organization that recognizes some amazing um, students. Um, and uh, encourages other students to kind of strive to um, exhibit these qualities. So Project 351, for more than 10 years, has been um, an organization in Massachusetts that um, basically emphasizes uh, service, uh, gratitude, compassion, kindness, uh, humility, and I love this phrase of theirs, uh, generosity of spirit. Um, the Project 351 folks focus on eighth grade as a moment of tremendous opportunity um, in a student's life um, to grow in their capacity to be a leader um, and in their capacity to serve others. Um, so each year, um, 351 eighth grade ambassadors are selected. That's Project 351, re representing all the cities and towns in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, um, to represent that town um, and their school um, as an ambassador with the rest of the eighth grade ambassadors from the state. So each year at the O'Donnell Middle School, students are nominated for consideration as the ambassador for Project 351. Um, there is no application process. Uh, teachers silently nominate eighth grade students who exhibit the qualities of kindness, compassion, humility, generosity of spirit, and an ethic of service to others. Uh, the ambassador ultimately will participate in a launch day um, and will serve for a year uh, bring a service project back to Stoughton and then have the opportunity for lots of other service um, learning opportunities um, and networking connections and stuff like that. Um, so every student I'm going to mention tonight was nominated, um, all deserving um, of the award. There is only one ambassador. The 2021 Project 351 ambassador is Taylor Morales. Um, the other nominees from OMS are Angelica Barbosa. Um, Cameron Gulsharan, uh, Casey Groby, Noah Schwensfire, Lena Sonafanif, um, and not here this evening, Sienna Thompson um, and Michaela Graffeo. So those are our nominees and our ambassador, students who exhibit all of these qualities every day. They make their school a better place, they make your town a better place, um, and the future's pretty bright, pretty bright for all of them, so happy to recognize them all here this evening. Congratulations. Thank you. Senator? Well, thank you very much, Mr. Colantonio, and thank you, Madam Chair. Where would you like me to uh, present from, Madam Chair? You can move your mic and present from. Katie, you want to move closer to me and you can stand right here? Yeah. That, and then, Mr. Colantonio, do you want to bring the mic with you over here? And I'd love can, to. Oh, this okay. thing travels? Yeah. Sure. Oh, yeah. Well, you can have my you, back. And there you go. You can use this one as well. Well, thank you. you very much. She's been dying sick. Thank you all very much. Good to see you. Good to see you. Thank you so much for coming. Mrs. Pianokia. Thank you, Mrs. <laughs> Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. To all the members of the thank committee, you. thank you very much for being here. And, of course, to our parents and families of our great honorees tonight. Uh, Mr. Colantonio, you're a tough act to follow. Thanks. But uh, what a wonderful topic to talk about uh, the cream of the crop here. Project 351 is a wonderful endeavor by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, and it recognizes excellence amongst our students. And you have, each and every one of you have demonstrated excellence for all of us. And as Mr. Colantonio mentioned, you make your school better, you make your town better, 
you make the entire Commonwealth of Mass better, each and every one of our Project 351. So I thank you. Uh, Rep. Ted Phillips and Rep. Bill, Bill Galvin, congratulate you. I congratulate you. And I have these citations honoring each and every one of you from the State Senate. So you are now in the records of the Massachusetts State Senate. It's recorded in the clerk's office. It's an official document. And what I will do is I will read one and then call each and every one of you up to receive it, if that's okay with the chair and the committee. Thank sure, you very absolutely. much. Thank you. This document states, Commonwealth of Massachusetts State Senate official citation. Be it known that the Massachusetts State Senate hereby extends its congratulations to each and every one of our graduates who stand before us tonight of Project 351, and of course our two honorees who are not able to be with us tonight, for wonderful works that you do for your fellow students and your fellow citizens here in the great town of Stoughton. And be it further known, the Massachusetts State Senate extends its best wishes for continued success, that this citation be duly signed by the President of the State Senate and attested to and a copy thereof transmitted by the Clerk of the Senate. It's been signed by our Senate President, Karen E. Spilka, attested to by our Clerk, Michael Hurley, and offered by myself, one very proud State Senator, Walter F. Timothy. So to start it off, could Alina come forward, please? You know what we'll do? We can have you. Yeah, I can do this you, while he does that. Yeah, yeah. Is that gotcha, okay? Gotcha, gotcha. Do you want to call Sienna. the okay. Sienna, come forward, please. I'll I'm just, sorry. Mr. Colin Tony mentioned that Sienna's not able to do this today. So I'm going to entrust this. Is the, is the, of course, to Mr. Colin Tony when he's done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And I'm more than happy to present to Sienna at school someday, if that's appropriate. Yeah. Okay. Hey, Sienna. Casey Grovey. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so much for Thank coming, you. Senator Timothy. Thank really appreciate it. It's nice to see you. Thank you. Yeah, it goes on that table over there. Thank you. Congratulations to all of you. We're so happy. Congratulations, Taylor. We're proud that you're able to go and represent us. Um, you guys make Stoughton proud. We really appreciate all the kindness and all the, the, the traits that you have um, bringing those to everybody in, in the schools in Stoughton. So we appreciate that. And what we're going to do now, Mr. Cole Antonio, if you're on the same page, is we're going to ask all of you to turn your chairs, pick your chairs up, line them up across here, and then Dr. Av, Mr. Ford, Mr. Cole Antonio, we're going to get a group photo. It's a little different now with COVID. Usually we used to do a procession and handshakes, but. So put your chairs and you're going to sit in your Back chairs. There you go. 
back them up. There you go. There you go. And then Katie, why don't you come in? No, you guys can come back here. Oh yeah. You can definitely come in with us. Sure. They're gonna get on their knees. We gotta squash. <laughs> Stand up, will you? <laughs> get on the chair. All right. All right. Yes, please. Absolutely. Here, do you mind moving this down? Good thing we moved that other chair. Yeah, you gotta balance this. <laughs> Katie will get in here with me. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Mr. Colantonio, okay. why don't you want to come down okay. this time with Katie, Center Mr. Colantonio? All right. And then Dr. Rab will get behind us. <laughs> I think anybody could get behind me. But <laughs> anyway. Do you guys want to hold up your? I know Mr. Barbosa is going to get awards. in somewhere. Get your awards. You guys hold up your awards for Mr. Oh. Colantonio, the small black ones. You can hold them up so right up your parents can get pictures of you holding <laughs> your awards. Just fold them back, fold back the cover, and then you can. There you go. There you go. Very good. Hi, everybody ready? Say cheat. Oh, wait, doesn't matter. <laughs> the mask on. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Yay! All right. Good? Yep. All right. We good, parents? Good? Families? Wonderful. Congratulations, guys. <laughs> Have a great night. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. All right, I'm going to move you to We're just going to take a five minute recess. And we'll be right back. Waiver of fees request from the parents of performing students. So we'll ask them to come up. If you can just um, push the button on the mic, it'll go green, and then you'll, you'll know it's on. You can put it between the both of you. And if you don't mind just stating your names, that'd be wonderful. Sorry, I don't have. Oh, they're right here on this letter. Stephanie? Yes. And Julie? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Welcome to our meeting, and thank you for coming. It was a nice surprise to see you guys here. <laughs> so we have this waiver. Um, do you want to explain what your request is for? So we're requesting that the building fees get waived so that we can host a uh, sense of competition, um, a, a sense of performance that our kids have already um, competed against other students to get into. OK. So, okay, cool. Um, and SEMSBA is a festival. It says Senior SEMSBA Festival at Stoughton High School. Yes. Um, it what sounds is, really cool. What is it? What does SEMSBA, SEMSBA stand for? Yeah. Oh, I knew you were going to ask. That. <laughs> <laughs> I can never seem to remember. So, it st stands for the Southeastern Massachusetts School Bandmasters Association. Oh. Um, and several surrounding towns send their kids to um, try out and only a select few get into it. So we are proud that we have six senior census. Wow, that's awesome. And I see from the letter it's March 18th and 19th of 2022 and it's going to be held outside. Is there a rain date or? No, it's actually inside the high school. Oh, it is inside. It's, a it's after hours. Okay, because the letter says outside. <laughs> outside of school hours. Ah, my interpretation. Okay, that's awesome. So it sounds so cool. Um, so it's going to be like in the auditorium and stuff. And it's, is it like, like what what do they do at these things? It's very exciting. <laughs> I'm actually super excited. Is it like, and, and you're Mr. Mange, you're Mr. welcome Mange. to come up <laughs> because I think like you're probably super it's pumped. Never been. Oh, you've never been either. Oh, it sounds so cool. Well, it's, a, it's a festival that's held every year, and it's uh, a really cool opportunity. We have about 250 students that come from around southeastern Massachusetts, uh, and they've been auditioned into ensembles. Um, they rehearse in those ensembles for about a day, and then uh, at the end of the festival, they perform for, uh, for community members, family, wow. and friends. Big, big performance. It's usually actually two concerts at the end. Um, because it's a lot of a lot of ensembles. There's a choir, there's an orchestra, a band, and a jazz band. Um, and it's a it's a really nice opportunity 
uh, for all of those students, and a lot of our kids in Stoughton only ever play with kids, other kids in Stoughton, right? Yeah. Um, so being able to, to actually sit in an ensemble with kids from Norwood and from That's cool. uh, Hanover and all these other towns uh, is, is a really cool opportunity for, for our students and for all those other towns. That is Especially awesome. We've never hosted it before. We haven't had the facilities to, to offer, um, but we have been beneficiaries of this wonderful organization since the, uh, I think at least since the 70s. Wow. Thank you guys for um, explaining that. Never heard of it, so that's really cool. So Yeah, and I, uh, I think it's great that they're bring, you're actually hosting it and bringing it to Stoughton. I think that's a wonderful opportunity for all the kids to show off the beard, the nice school <laughs> that we have. Um, Start a new tradition. <laughs> yeah, so yes. I'll make a motion unless you... Does anybody else have anything sorry. they wanted to say? Sorry, Katie. No. So just I just had a question with regards to security. Is there security there for all the individuals that will be attending? I know you, you guys said you have liability insurance for the event. Yeah, we, we purchased a, a separate policy just for this. Okay. Um, in terms of security, if, if the uh, town requires a police detail, we can make arrangements for that. Uh, it's mainly, it, it, when it's done, which is not, uh, it, it's unusual, mm -hmm. uh, but when it's done, it's mm -hmm. usually only for the concerts uh, to direct traffic in the, okay. uh, in the parking lots. Uh, we probably have a traffic pattern that will, that will not require that, because we're not really on a city street or anything. Um, so, but uh, apart from that, uh, we uh, will have custodial nursing, uh, on staff at all times, and uh, uh, as well as cafeteria workers. There won't be a security guard per se, though. Do the members come with chaperones or groups? They, every every okay. town is required to bring a teacher with them, so okay. every single student is oh. chaperoned. Okay. Yes. So Good it's only 250 them. students with a chaperone, like <laughs> for each of the districts. Yeah. So it's not the school is full of many more yeah, there's people. Yeah, about, there's about 30 music teachers there. Yeah. Okay. So it's a, it's a pretty good ratio. Yeah. Awesome. That's so cool. And just to put this into perspective, my daughter is in 11th grade. She will be participating. She hasn't had the opportunity to do this in person since she was in 8th grade. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Wow. Okay, so you had made a motion to... Can, can I have yeah. a motion to waive the... Um, the Use the facility. Rental Use the fee. facility rental fees for the parents of performing students. For March 18th and 19th in 2022, to host in order to host the 2022 Senior Semsba Festival at Stoughton High. That was a long motion. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll well, second it. Okay. <laughs> Great. All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> Thank you guys so much. Have have a blast. Good luck. Can't Thank wait to see pictures. Much. I'm sure Mr. Pickett will have pictures posted on our page. Good Thank luck. Yeah, it's Thank awesome you. So much. Thank you. It's a great opportunity. It's exciting. It's exciting. Yeah. Um, the next item on our agenda is the presentation of the article from Lost to Opportunity. Hello. Do we have a copy of it in here or no? Yeah. No. Okay. Unfortunately, no. It's a digital. Oh. Thank you for having us. Thank you for Very coming. Exciting. So, um, Laurie Higgins and I have been writing partners for many years, and we've been fortunate to have several articles published. Usually, focus is on literacy instruction, and this is really no different. So we decided to write an article and submit it based on the program that we ran at the Wilkins last summer, an accelerated reading program. So um, as we were getting towards the end of last year um, and the crazy school year it was, Katie was looking at all of the data and um, she was extremely forward thinking. So she saw what we needed for our first graders to enter second grade and she wrote a grant um, that allowed us to offer this accelerated reading program. Um, we had five teachers um, that were two first grade, one special education, um, one of our student teachers came in, and then myself, and we ran this program. It was, it, it ran the same hours as Nights of Summer Camp, um, so the students were able to get a good amount of 
um, literacy instruction in that time because we had them from 8.30 to 1.30, 8.30 to 1.30, which we also mm -hmm. had breakfast and lunch in there, um, but they still had an extraordinary amount of time for us to work with them and, and bring them forward to start their second grade year. So the article just kind of details out how we conceived the idea, how I proposed it to Mr. Ford and was able to get funding for it, and then just how the implementation went through and the success we had. And I think remarkably, we discovered that every single student that attended the camp increased the reading level most by three levels, which wow. is absolutely incredible. Um, that's unheard of in a typical semester, much less in five weeks. So. It was something that we were very proud to share with the academic community, and that's why we decided to write the article about it. And it was it was taken and, and published in the world. So thank you for letting us share that with all of you. Can you tell the, the audience where it is, where if they can find it? Sure. So this is a publication that Massachusetts Reading, Reading Association puts out, and it is one of their biannual publications. And this is the first time that they went to a fully digital um, copy, so we do have the link. Um, Mr. Pickett actually asked for it, and um, hopefully it'll be able to be shared so people can read it. Um, and people in the academic community subscribe to this regularly, so I'm sure that many have already seen it. So. Wow. Was that a one-time um, activity, or you guys are planning it to continue it again? Sorry, I'm, a, I'm, actually, I'm actually happy that you asked. So I have already kind of started the proposal mm -hmm. process for this coming summer because we had such mm -hmm. success with it last year. So fingers crossed um, we'll be able to do something very similar um, mm -hmm. this year as well. And Is what does the attendance look like? So we have not actually determined yet mm -hmm. what the attendance will be because we really do have to study the data mm -hmm. to see who would benefit the most from it. Our hope is that we would be able to invite about 25 to 30 students like we did last summer and, and have fantastic results again, I have no doubt. Mm -hmm. Sounds great. Good thank job. You. <laughs> Anita, do you have any questions? Uh, good, thank you. Katie? Uh, is, there some, is this something that could be branched out to the other elementary schools as well? I mean, I know that in the summertime you have the, um, the Wilkins open because of the, the summer, um, but I didn't know if it could be, I mean, it sounds like it's amazing. I wish that sure, you were here sure. a long time ago. <laughs> so I do think, I mean, all of the elementary principals have definitely, they, they focus on what the needs are in their building and definitely, you know, try to figure out how to best service the students in their school. This is something that we found mm -hmm. our students would need. So I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility. I do know that the Knights of Summer program is having an accelerated program offered to students this summer as well. So there are going to be several students that will be able to participate and take advantage of that. Um, the reason that we did this last year was because that wasn't part of the Knights of Summer program. Oh, okay. So yeah, so this was something we felt that the students needed above and beyond what they were going to be able to get at Knights of Summer. I think it's amazing. Like it, it, it just it gives the kids such. Um, they they just when they know how to read and they have that encouragement and every, it, it's just it brings the kids so far. So thank you very much oh, for doing that. So I think it's amazing that they went up three reading levels, especially during the COVID pandemic, considering that we're having some loss in in learning. So that was amazing. Um, when you talked about proposing it, is it grant funded again? So are you putting forward for that grant? So the way that the whole process worked was I wrote a proposal and submitted it to Mr. Ford, and then Mr. Ford found the funding for it. So you would probably be able to speak a little bit more about that than me. <laughs> and so, and so what, what, our, what our summer model is, is we have a number of programs. We actually run programs from preschool all the way through the high school, and they're all free, and we have a standard set of programs that we offer. But we also give the principals the capacity to sift through the data of their schools, and if they identify a specific need that's not being met by our standard summer program, they absolutely can submit proposals to me or the superintendent. And we can, you know, we can fund them out of the district budget, or we can look for alternative sources, grant funding, or other things to go ahead and target a specific program for the kids in that building to meet a specific need. And Ms. Monahan's program is a good example of that. Um, she had a specific need that wasn't covered by our general summer programming and she developed a proposal, submitted it, she backed it up by the data, talked about her staffing needs, gave me the, like the cost of the program, 
coordinated it with uh, facilities to ensure the fact it didn't interfere with our summer cleaning program. And then we, we just funded the program. Ms. Monahan took the reins, and we had a tremendous result. So and any one of our principals, if they have a similar scenario where they can identify a specific need, they can bring a same or a similar proposal forward. So um, this Knights of Summer is offering it as well. So we're going to offer it in two schools now, two different areas. So, so it depends on our, on our capacity. And this particular program we did run at the Wilkins mm -hmm. because this summer with all the programs we're running, we're basically full at the middle school. Now, we've, we have Acceler Acceleration Academies, which is the model that Ms. Monaghan utilized last year at the Wilkins to, to provide this specific type of instruction. Um, and we are running them at, at, within the Knights of Summer program and at the middle school and at the high school this summer. But if a principal found they had a specific need that wasn't covered by our programming, they absolutely can come to that and, I say, and say, I specifically need this. This is the capacity. This is the number of kids. This is what I need for staffing, and we can put the whole thing together. And there's plenty of time left to do that between now and summer if we identify additional needs. The data that we're getting right now gives, would give an administrator a very good idea of what their kids need by grade level throughout their school. And if they have a sufficient number of kids that need one specific kind of intervention or instruction, we can absolutely put it together. Kudos to you guys. Kudos to you, Ms. Monahan, for um, finding this, thinking outside the box, I think, and trying to figure out a way to benefit you know the students and do what's best for them especially during covid it's amazing it wouldn't be possible without the fantastic staff i have to shout out to them it's phenomenal so yeah that's we awesome appreciate your time and thank you thank, thank you congratulations thank you. for being published <laughs> sure forget about that that's pretty cool huh that's very cool and now you have the um the the books in the in the vending machine. <laughs> oh yeah, called. the vending machine. The, the books, yeah, so the book that's vending machines. Even better, I think, yeah, so. that's. I mean, that was pretty cool. Um, okay, so the next item on the agenda is the school calendar approval. We have calendar A. We have calendar B. Dr. Rab, yes. I'm sorry. I'm just looking at the whole thing, the packet for the first sure. time. So do you want to just take this from here? Absolutely. Okay. Thank you, Mrs. Gropi. Sure. So we had two calendars that we had proposed. My recommendation this evening would be to go with calendar B. That would start us on September 1st, just before Labor Day. It would allow um, all of the staff to return on Thursday the 1st and students on Friday the 2nd. And then um, we'd have Labor Day and then first day for preschool and kindergarten on September 6th. That allows us to be finished a little bit sooner in June and allows for some snow days. Can I ask a question? Sure. With the election season coming up in the fall, um, would we're not the, sure with the COVID protocols? Obviously, we're exactly. hoping this will all be gone. We can go back to business as usual. But we'll, I know that when we had the past, this, this most recent election, we had to shift one of the buildings because we couldn't. Yes have elections in that building as the students would eat at their desks and it's not allowed per the current requirements. Exactly. So I believe in September there's supposed to be another, um, right? Like Isn't a, it November? It, November the September, September 6th. There's, a, there's an election schedule for September, September 6th. Okay. If we do go with um, B, the students are back in school. So, but, but we'll be able to plan accordingly ahead of time I with them, so. the yes. town as well to let them know, just in case if we're able to, to let them know that that building. Absolutely. Okay. We'll see where the COVID protocols are at that time, but yeah. Okay. Sure. I just want to make sure. Okay. No, thank you. Yes. Does anybody have any questions, any comments, any questions? We know what Katie will say, but. Yeah, she did it. <laughs> no, she threw the calendars at me at the last meeting. Um, no, I'm good. Okay. I'm good. Yeah. I have nothing to say. Everyone yeah. knows that I like to start after Labor Day. I'm not going to change it. Yeah. So, you need a motion? Okay. So can someone make a motion, please? Motion to accept the Stoughton Public School calendar for 2022 through 2023 calendar uh, uh, version B starting uh, September 1st and ending hopefully June 22nd. With five snow days, yep. With five snow days. Second. Oh, he seconded. 
Is that your first second? Oh, yay. I'm all in favor. Aye. Three ayes and one no. Katie. Um, the next item is transportation contract. Yes, thank you, Mrs. Gropi, members of the committee. You may remember a couple of meetings ago, we took a look at the bid for our transportation services. And on January 27th, we held the bid opening for our transportation bid. And First Student, our current contractor, was the only contractor that bid on it. And we were a little bit surprised, um, but we did find out that some of the other bidders mentioned it's, it's very tough to recruit drivers right now. And so that was one of the reasons why other, other towns didn't bid. Um, this is a 7% increase in year one, which is exactly what we budgeted. Uh, it's actually a little bit better than we budgeted. And um, the primary reason for that increase is we added two buses. We went from 11 to 13 on this contract, and we also ensured that we had cameras on all of our buses. Those were the two big upgrades in this contract. And so, and then in years two and three of the contract, there are 3% increases, which is more commensurate with, with normal increases from year to year. So I'm requesting that the uh, committee this evening uh, vote a three-year contract for first student for $3,783,985.02, consistent with the bid, and, uh, and then we'll draw up a contract subsequent to the vote. Uh, the vote would be consistent with the contract. Okay. Um, does first student have a better handle opportunity guarantee to get drivers as opposed to the other companies? They seem to be doing okay right now, and we haven't heard that they've, they've not been able to staff the drivers. Is there anything in the in the verbiage of the contract that would give us peace of mind that they would always try always can't say always but staff their their buses because I see Boston and other towns having big issues and not having bus drivers and sure. doing double runs and kids getting up at you know five and going home at four and <laughs> sure understood I mean. What I can say is so far it hasn't been an issue. We've been able to staff them. The contract certainly requires them to provide our, to provide drivers for the buses. At the end of the day, you know, they're doing the best they can. They're doing the best recruiting they can. And um, like I said, we did increase to 13, and they were supportive of that. They understand that eliminates some double runs that we've been dealing with, too. So. And this contract begins? To In July 1. July, okay. Three years from July 1, and we do have an option for year four and year five, um, but we vote three years, and then in year four and year five, we can vote those options if we choose to, or go back out to bid either way. Okay. Anybody have any other questions for Dr. Rabb? Motion to accept the Stoughton School Transportation contract to with first Student Incorporated in the amount of three million seven hundred and eighty three thousand nine hundred and eighty five dollars and two cents to begin July first, twenty twenty two for a three year contract. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Dr. Rab, for that. The next item on the agenda is the Chapter seventy funding increase for Stoughton Schools. Thank you, Mrs. Gropi. I wanted to bring to the committee's attention that the proposed Chapter 70 aid in the governor's budget right now is a $4 million increase to our current Chapter 70. So right now, Stoughton enjoys $17 million in round figures of Chapter 70 aid. That would increase to $21 million in fiscal 23. Um, I will say that this is only the first round of the budget negotiations, and so it does go through several iterations between the, the House and the Senate and then a combined committee. Um, but under circumstances, it looks like Stoughton's going to realize a significant increase in our Chapter 70 money next year. And it is an opportunity for us to really take a look and, and see what we can do. The primary driver is our low-income population. So while our low-income population has gone up a bit, what they've done is they've identified almost um, 300 more students because they raised the threshold for a low income to 185 percent of the federal poverty level. And so here in Stoughton, that equates to a significant amount of additional funding. Um, and also, we have had additional enrollment, particularly in preschool and kindergarten, and some of the funding is also tied to that as well. So we're watching this very, very closely, and we're looking at it day by day and uh, seeing how it's sustainable through the budget process. Um, but it's something that um, is, is new for us, and we're just trying to figure it out and move forward that way. 
nice to see the correction with the mm. Chapter 70 funding. We've been saying for many years that um, what we could do with more money, and we've been hurting, but we've also been coming forward with conservative budgets, um, you know, trying to be mindful of, you know, the taxpayers and what's going on um, in the world today. So seeing the correction and knowing that that money's coming forward, I'll be happy to see the final number that gets passed through for the schools. And I'm um, looking forward to bringing that article forward to town meeting um, and letting folks know that that money is set for the schools because that, that's what it's meant for. And I'm also excited to see what you prepare as the list of items that we can now be able to provide, more importantly, focused around those low-income families because that's what Chapter 70 funds. It's one of the key things for it. We're not able to spend Chapter 70 funds on anything other than the students in the schools. Chapter 70 funds are strictly for that reason, so it's not to, to build buildings, it's not to fix roads, and it's not to um, put in a rainy day fund. Chapter 70 funds are to be used on students. Um, so I am really excited about that. I know we've been talking about all the fees that we have for students and I all the things. A lot, a lot of fees, and yeah. knowing that our uh, low-income population, um, this correction with the low-income low income population and the, high, the increased enrollment in um, the preschool and kindergarten um, numbers, I think that this makes plenty of sense as to why we're getting this much when other districts maybe got 200,000 increase. Um, Stoughton kind of was, with the correction, got quite a bit more. So that kind of tells you what we're working with. And I look forward, I just look forward to being able to now provide those families that really need it, um, the help. Okay, so that's great, great news. Super excited. Um, bless you. So the next item is substitute teacher rate. Thank you very much. I wanted to just take a moment and provide a little bit of a rationale to the committee. Our current daily substitute rate is $80 a day. And what I have found quickly over the first three or four months that I've been here is that we're quickly um, losing competition to surrounding towns. And throughout the first half of the school year, we've had a very hard time recruiting subs, maintaining subs, the daily subs, because they can go to Canton and make $100 a day, or Easton and make 100 or Randolph even 150 And so surrounding towns, they're, and they're telling us this. I mean, the subs that come in and interview, when I tell them it's $80 a day, they're like, oh, I can go next door and make more money. And so we're losing those people. We're also losing um, people who would come in and maybe cover a short-term maternity leave or cover a short-term medical leave that might be 20 days or 25 or 30 days. And they'll come in, and, it, and unfortunately, it's the same $80 a day in those circumstances. And they'll come to me and they'll say, look, I can't take it for that. Because once you're in for a teacher for 20 days or 25 days, you're effectively doing the work of the teacher. You've, you've run out of the whatever work was left over, and you're, you're doing that work from day to day. So it really spent quite some time thinking about what would be a competitive rate, what would be a competitive opportunity for us to attract subs and maintain subs and keep subs. And so what I'd, I'd like to recommend, with your permission, Mrs. Gropey, is to increase us to $105 a day. That would give us a little bit of an edge over uh, surrounding towns. And then I think concurrent with that is on the 21st day that a daily substitute is covering for that same teacher. So not just 21 days uh, with different people, but 21 days with the same teacher we would increase that to the bachelor's one or master's one rate that's in the teacher's contract. Um, or if you don't have a bachelor's or master's, because sometimes we do hire juniors and seniors in college to sub, um, it would be $150 a day as an increase. And I think that would go a long way toward really allowing for us to be competitive with surrounding towns, recruit talented subs, recruit people who will come and stay. And very often, it's the sub pool that we look for our future teachers for, too. So we have subs in the buildings, and then those are the people we're going to look for when we have open teaching positions and say, you know, this is an opportunity for you to stay here in Stoughton and, and, and continue. So um, I'm certainly happy to have any discussion. I took the liberty of drafting a motion, um, which we can certainly amend, but I wanted to have that opportunity for you. So um, that's where we're at right now, and um, I'm happy to answer any questions about it. Um, Dr. Rob, I would assume that we could readdress this at any at, at a future date, also to, to to reassess 
if, if need be. Absolutely. Um, up or down. I, I'm just putting it out there. Just. And is there a contract or is it just policy? It's, it's at the school committee's discretion gotcha. for up to two teaching rates. Gotcha. Contractually, in, in, the, in our contract, we do have a section around maternity leave um, cover. 40 days or more. Right. So there is a piece in there, but it's only around um, if someone commits to covering a maternity leave. <laughs> I wish I could say this correctly. I'm going to try to remember. I think it's 40 days or more, they commit to it, and they get paid that um, extended, yeah, the long paid. period, yeah. because they're committing, yeah. which is beneficial to students. Yeah. Because yes. we see, Katie and I have, seen it this year right long-term subs when they come in and they're with the students for a long period of time the kids benefit yep. more from that than they do from different ones coming in and out so um, that and, and, and they're also putting together lesson plans and that's I think that's key too with substitutes when they come in and they're there for a period of time they're now starting to put together lesson plans which is additional work so we want this, the kids to benefit from you know a substitute that is coming in to the district that's getting paid well like competitively so that we can get some of those people and that are putting together good lesson plans and, and executing and, on them and not just the quantity that we need but also hopefully with the higher rate it would be quality that's right people, as opposed to just a body <laughs> a, a breathing person yeah. we had a very hard time I yeah. think with COVID getting anybody in extra yeah. in the buildings wanting to even come in so yeah. I can see why I saw on the news that um, one of the districts around here upped it and yeah. so it seems normal to me and it's been a problem with in Stoughton for a long time even uh, before COVID even yeah even before yeah. COVID yeah yeah um, we even had someone stand up at town meeting and say that the, the um, sub pay was so low it was embarrassing no so, really yeah no, I, I, wow. okay wow totally support the um, absolutely yeah. do we do we can we get a motion to, or do we have um I'll make a motion to yes some substitute I order I did, that's <laughs> <wanna>. wonderful <laughs> it helps us significantly effective February 9th 2022 I make a motion to increase the daily substitution rate from $80 a day to 105 a day on the 21st day I wait, the 21st day of daily substitute is covering for the same teacher the pay rate will increase to bachelor's one yep uh, masters for those with a college degree or 150 day uh, per day for those without bachelor's or master's degree perfect second wonderful all in favor start down the sun aye aye aye, aye. I cannot thank all of you enough on behalf of all of our substitutes and students. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. We hope this will be able to help students. We've had a lot of substitutes for the years, like Katie mentioned, an issue, but a lot um, recently and the past couple of years. So this would be great. This is excellent. We'll start advertising tomorrow. Yeah. Good luck. Thank you. Yeah. Hopefully, we'll get. You know, that'll be huge. Um. I think there's like a lot there are just to get back on that there are a lot of stories out there about issues getting substitutes um yeah, i don't know if you guys read them like mainly because of covid right now but right. We've, we've had an issue for yeah we've, we've had an issue had it because it, it it's just not been um i don't know like we don't pay we didn't pay comparatively towards um to other surrounding communities so to address it the way you have i appreciate that thank you thank you dr reb um, the next I, I feel like I'm gonna skip something now Katie so I keep pausing um, <laughs> there is the next item is the state theater letter of support I received an email from John Stagnoni um, I forward it to all you we have a hard copy in here mm -hmm. and it states that the friends of the state theater just before COVID had a great meeting with the Secretary of Economic Development Michael Keneally I hope I said that right and his staff now with COVID being around for a couple of years and cases heading back down, Friends of State Theater had a follow-up meeting with the Undersecretary of Economic Development and following their suggestions is going to be filing for some state grants. As part of the grant application process, they look for letters of support. Attached is a letter of support from the school committee when we were applying to the Mass Cultural Council. For this letter, we would like 
it to be about restoring the theater in general and its benefits so we can use it for a number of different grant applications. We appreciate any assistance you can provide with getting this letter of support for us. Stay safe. Thank you, John Stagnoni. Um, and then the letter of support that was written from the prior school committee um, is on the back side of this email. Um, I just wanted to bring it to everyone's attention and talk about it and see if any folks um, were comfortable with writing a letter and taking a vote and if you wanted your names on it or not, et cetera. That was like almost 10 years ago, um, letter. Yeah. Uh, it's been a while. I don't know, I mean, it'd be great to restore the theater, but do we know anything like how, what, the, what their plans are or anything like that? Did we get any information on that? I'm not FinCom. I don't know. <laughs> oh, no, I just know that they want oh, no, to file grant applications. Oh no, no. Oh, I was like, I don't know. No, no he didn't give me. It was just that email. I think what they're looking to do is just to fill grants to. To I don't know. Basic, basically, what I see is the the focus of of Mr. Segnone's letter is the next to last sentence for this restoring. letter. We would like to be at about restoring the theater right. in general. And its benefits, so we can use it for a number. So we can use the letter for a number of different grant applications. When you read the the letter that was put forth, you know, nine years ago or whatever, it was a couple times was mentioned specifically for you know it would benefit not only Stoughton as a whole, but the Stoughton School District for the students and the musicians and that type of thing. And I don't believe that that specifically was is what he's looking for. He's looking for a more general. In other words, my 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 take on this mm -hmm. request is, they want us to support the theater, but not necessarily have it involve or guarantee to involve the students or our students, musicians. That's the way I read it, mm -hmm. and that may just be me. I support the state, this you know the state theater. It's a great, it's an old building. Mm -hmm. I have never been inside it. I assume you know it could be restored. It would take a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Where is it? It's right on Main next Street the, um, at the end. Um, by you know where the um, Mexican that, restaurant is? Um, the the, that's um, the yeah, theater. They used there. to use it. The Mexican yeah, Mr. Yeah. Ford knows. What's oh, that it, restaurant? It's been gone for an awful yeah. long time. Right. On the corner. Um, but it was over right across near, from avocados. Um, avocados. Oh, okay. Of course, yeah. Jeff Pickett yeah. knows. <laughs> but it's right next to avocados. It's just. It, it really doesn't it doesn't cost us anything to support it it doesn't you know, but it, it's goodwill it's community involvement it's restoring the downtown or part of sort of at the end of downtown all those good things it just oh, yeah, no, I mean that would be great but I just think that we might want to know what exactly what more the, information the plans. about it because I mean this was written before we got the new right. high school like this, right. a lot of things have changed I mean, but um, but time. anything to do with right. this is upgrading all, the um, downtown would be wonderful. Right. Wow. This is all this this particular group is all donation driven, so to speak. I don't know how else to define it. It's not really. Non it's not a town. Yeah. It's not. Right. A, it's not a town organization. It's a like uh, Sandra said. It's a nonprofit, and they take donations. And obviously, they're going to be applying for grants. And for grants, they need. They're looking for letters support. of support. Um, for this letter, we'd like it to be about restoring the theater in general right. and its benefits so we can use it for a number of different grant applications. So right. it looks like they're looking, I think Fabian, you just mentioned, I think it's in the letter, I was just looking at it too. It kind of sit, it, it, it kind of touches on that um, where it says there are not too many cultural opportunities in Stoughton outside of the schools right. where the award winning student musicians can partake of opportunities to showcase their talents. This would be a fantastic venue for both students and the community. So, in other words, it's saying um, if they renovate it, this is a good opportunity for other um, outlets, not just the schools, right. but other outlets in the community, which I think is a great <laughs> idea. Yeah. I agree. I think the letter. I get it. If you update the letter, Up, basically, update, yeah. this is what it's done before. You have to specify that. Okay. Um, Do you want me to send him an email um, asking him like what they plan oh, on doing can, to it? You guys can do whatever you would like to. Um, and like I said, I would su I support the upgrading of the downtown 100%, but yeah. I just... We don't really know. I mean, I'm assuming it's going to be a theater. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know what he most likely needs. 
maybe you can talk to him about the what the letter needs to be. Yeah. It needs to. What he's looking for. Yeah. <laughs> Types of grants. Going well, he, what he's looking for in the letter. What is he? Does he have an idea of what he want, wants it to say? Is it, to help us out yeah, to write the letter. Yeah, that's the example that he gave. I just got a copy with something similar. Oh yeah, it's general. That, that was a, But it's general. I like the t the top part's general. Okay, using the letter. Like I said, you can but do But this this part. letter was written by the school committee, not him. So. Correct. So, guys, I think why don't we talk together and. Um, I'm just going to read what the other letter stated. It's general in the first paragraph and agree. It says, by unanimous support of the members present, the, school com the Stoughton School Committee endorses restoration of the historic state theater. We look forward to seeing the theater restored to the gem that it once was. I don't write talk like that, though, so I might strike that line. <laughs> but um, um, there, are, there are not too many cultural opportunities in Stoughton outside of the schools where the award-winning student musicians can partake of opportunities to showcase their talents. This would be a fantastic venue for both students and the community to enjoy live music, dance, drama, and comedy, as well as cinema. Re revitalizing the downtown area is important for the quality of life of all our residents, including students, many of whom patronize businesses downtown. The school committee supports all cultural opportunities in the community. The ability to showcase family entertainment in a renovated theater is important to attracting families and businesses to our community and the school committee wholeheartedly supports that effort. So this that was the letter that was written in 2013 as Katie mentioned almost 10 years ago and if that is general enough I can just write have that and leave it as such. It's up to you guys. I guess a, either a conversation or an email like you were saying to ask him if 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 that's enough if that's what he wants no yeah i want more elaboration on family entertainment qualifies make sure that we agree with it well i don't think it's going to be like a yeah. <laughs> I mean, we can't. I don't want to go. Do. I want to be full disclosure. Just I'm just going to. Can I just make full disclosure to everybody at the table? <laughs> I'm not going to go and ask them details of what they were planning and all that stuff because I feel like we're not here to say what they're supposed to do with the property and I don't want to get into that business. Yep. Um, I, I think if they're asking us, and I can write a general thing. It's a general. Um, but if it's saying they look, would like us to just talk about restoring the theater in general and right. its benefits to the community. Right. That's what I thought I just read, but I'm happy to rewrite something that's similar and keep it as such. But I think it's just us about the idea of supporting. just supporting the idea. I don't want to, you know, I just don't, I don't, I don't want to know. I don't want specs or anything like that, <laughs> you know? Well, it's not, it's not for us. It's for right. the, it's for the entire community. Yeah. That's my thoughts. Yeah. So, Katie, what are your thoughts? If he, I mean, I think that we also would like, like more information. If that's what he wants to restore the theater, then I think that he, he will get support for that. Right. That's what it says. Yes. It's for restoring the theater. It's. I don't know. I just. I guess. I. I just need more. I don't know. Like what you guys are asking me to ask him. It says to restore the theater. So am I asking him for specs or what no. they're trying to restore? I don't know. I, I, I don't want to do that. No, the question I would ask him is, is, is the 10 year old letter. Mm -hmm. Is it good enough? Is right. it sufficient? That's right. Right. And that's it. Right. Good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's, if we want um, to make a motion to support this letter, I will put um, whoever says yes and they'd like their name on it. I will put their name on the letter for the general support of restoring the I make a state motion, theater. I make a motion to construct a, or uh, update the letter to the Friends of the Stoughton State Theater uh, supporting their efforts towards renovating this downtown state theater. Okay. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Put Joe's so I'll name write on. something up. Put Joe's name on there too. <laughs> no, I don't think he'll feel comfortable if he's not here because I don't know, you know, how he feels about it. Joking. 
Oh, okay. Because I was like, I don't want to do that either. Um, so I'll draw, I'll write this up. I'll ask if that suffice, and then I'll send you guys an email with it. And then, okay. This is the first time I've seen anything like this for us to. You know. Hopefully, they're able to get grants for whatever they're looking to do. Okay. So the next item is policy revisions. Um, Dr. Rab, you're probably going to be talking again during this one. Um, so there's three that are listed. Um, Dr. Rab was kind enough to bring one particular one to our attention um, in this meeting, which is, if I look at IJ, no, JJH student travel. Trying to find them all. Sorry, guys. JJH. Um, if you op if you put IJAO and JJH in front of you side by side, it might be easier for me to explain it to you. Sorry. So we have a policy on the MASC site that is published. Our policy for field trips IJOA. <laughs> And at the bottom, it cross-references JJH policy relating to field trips involving late night or overnight travel. Um, we do not have that policy on our MASC website, and it's not in our policy document. Dr. Rabb um, had noted that the policy JJH he was trying to reference because there are a couple overnight field trips that um, have come to him. and he was looking for the policy to understand how does he bring it forward for the school committee to approve. And when he couldn't find it, he reached out. So JJH is the model MASC policy. This is what other school districts have. So it's, this is a weird one because we do have on one policy referencing the policy, but it's not on our MASC page. So this one would be, JJH would be to just approve it to be on the MASC page. We don't have to do that tonight, but you can read it and it's a standard policy. And then IJAO is simply editing the bottom to say JJH student travel, period, not that long name of what, whatever policy that says. Got it. So um, that's that piece. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I hope I explained it right, Katie. Mm -hmm. Okay. I know. So that's why I want you guys to look at it side by side. I tried to cross things out, so I don't know. So there was that. And then Dr. Rab kindly reminded me of Friday, <laughs> another one. Um, policy covering the use of school facilities um, during the when we had the April election unfortunately um, we weren't able to have voting at the South Elementary because the February one? what's that the last one? yeah when was that yeah. February. February thank 1st. you Shady um, and per possibly April due to um, restrictions at the South the way the school is students during elections um, they get their lunch in the cafeteria they grab it, they go back to their desks and eat because the voting is in the cafeteria at the South School. During the pandemic, unfortunately, students, because we're all back in school full time, they're not able to sit at their desks with their masks off and eat for long extended periods of time. Um, so we had to not be able to approve the permit for the South and therefore they had it at Cedar Hill Golf Course, which was close by. And it looked like they had like, I think it was the second highest votes in that in the local election so it did very well so it was nice to hear that that worked out um but what came from that is we really wanted to make sure i told the town clerk i wanted to make sure that we are clear on expectations for for that and, and that she has the ability to be able to look at something and reference it um so that it's not confusing for her or anybody that reaches out for other items um, the time span on when to reach out and that way we can make sure that we can vet all those things and we can we can share that information with people so it's color coded and I, I did it quite quickly um, again because he had recently brought it to my attention and the working group wasn't able to meet and discuss it because we wanted to get it in this and I had told the town clerk that I I kind of said we were going to bring this forward in February um, so basically in paragraph three, it says permit. This is what the wording will, would be: um, permission for the use of school facilities and grounds must be obtained through the district office no less than two weeks in advance, except for town elections, in town meeting, 
which will requ require no less than six weeks. Historical use of facilities or grounds does not dictate that the request will be approved and may be denied at the district's discretion or substituted with an alternate facility that is not requested on the facility's use application. That part's important because we also were finding that um, we're using buildings differently and um, we have a lot of youth sports activities that are happening in town and the middle school is being used the last three months for basketball on the weekends and uh, many days during the week and then we have other folks that are coming and looking to use the buildings and it's not available and the high school is not available because that's being used for high school sports so it's it's getting very hard to, fit, to yeah it's very tight and i think because we had extended stoughton extended day move to the dawn the gibbons it changed the opportunity for Stoyak basketball because those are the two schools of the full course that they used to use. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll have to look at correcting extended day after school um, next year because we signed a one-year contract with Stoughton extended day. Regardless, when people bring forward um, use of facilities applications, it is not different than how it has been done in the past. If something is booked, uh, what we're basically trying to say is if you ask for one building and it's not available We're gonna say we can give you this building instead and that is that's just is what it is um, We I, I'm just shocked at how packed it is and this isn't even like full open yet um, But there's a lot of activities and I think a lot of people want to use the high school But unfortunately the students come first in that case with the <laughs> With their their Are you saying activities. We should probably build another school. I think <laughs> yes, the South. I think we should, <laughs> Katie. Exactly. <laughs> doom, doom. Doom, doom, doom. <laughs> um, so that's kind of around that because we want people to understand that, but we want to try to figure out what's best for the, like the best solution. You never want to say no, so you want to try to figure out the best solution. Yeah. Um, so that's for that. So there's no surprises, and then under applications all permit requests must include the specific dates being requested placeholder dates will not be approved um, we're having a lot of issues with placeholders and and it's i it's crazy i've never seen you like you get a lot dr rab so now that the um we have someone from the school committee that's part of the process um it's just mind-boggling to see just how many I can't imagine how Leanne is doing with all this this is like a lot of requests she must yeah so that I think um, was the so piece help. that you brought forward to that will help being able to identify especially mr. Ford you're bringing a lot of new things through ESSER grant to the schools some of those are um, over school breaks um, different like f futsal is that what it's called? Oh, he's so excited. He's already he's going for the mic. Yeah, we <laughs> do we you want fact, to talk about it. We piloted a futsal program this winter, and we're running it over at the Gibbons on on Friday nights. But uh, but we've had a tremendous response, and our our younger sections. I mean, they filled up in, in over the first week, and they were offered. And uh, it's it's a model we were looking at, and we hope to push it out to some other sports and just have more opportunities for kids to play specific sports year round or different derivations of sports to build different skills and. I think uh, I think we're going to be able to offer a lot more over the next okay. few years, that's and that's excellent. awesome. That goes hand in hand with this too, because mm -hmm. as the Stoughton School starts to build our programs and our sports programs, and we want to start to offer, especially Chapter 70, this is giving opportunities to students to do things after school that, um, in programs like you talked about, that they normally wouldn't be able to, being able to offer free sports and free things like that. So we can't have placeholder dates because now you're starting to build on what it's going to look like even at the middle school level and stuff for sports activities so um that's in there and then the other piece is eligibility this is just two pieces left it's local nonprofit organizations and local for-profit organizations or individuals okay is that piece and then the fees and charge, and then I'll, Dr. Rab, if it's okay, I know this was kind of your baby too, so if I, you can, you're sure. more than welcome to jump in. No, thank you. Um, and then fees and charges, just this is how it's been, always been, um, and what we want to do is just make it clear. Um, PTAs, PTOs, POPs, who were here this evening with a letter asking for the waiver, that the their parents that are raising funds for the you know students in band the performing arts to travel so it's not for our students it's not something that you know frivolous so it's PTAs PTOs POPs town elections town meeting town hazard waste days and town recreational department activities benefiting students 
school students will automatically be waived from paying the facility slash grounds fees only, meaning they always have been, but we wanted to put that in writing because we need other folks to understand that they do need to come forward with a request to waive a fee. It's not automatically waived. Um, and it's for local nonprofit. It's not for nonprofits outside of the community. Um, as we mentioned, we're trying to bring sports into the community, so we'd like to be able to offer those before other outside town folks come in and um, for profit. Thank you. Um, I, I don't know. Is there anything you want to add? No, thank you very much. Uh, the clarity, uh, particularly around PTAs, PTOs, POPs, town elections, and recreation department is helpful and the town hazardous way stays this is traditionally how we've been operating and putting that clarity in writing is very helpful to me particularly as a new superintendent trying to manage it yeah. so we'll just pause there's a lot sorry katie oh no baby yeah. anita i'm good um okay. are we voting on this lot. tonight or no well, it wasn't for vote. It, I mean, we could because we have that in the policy, but it was really, this is last, <laughs> I was trying to throw them together, but it's if we we can if we want to because if we feel comfortable with it, um, we can make when's edits. Next, when's our next meeting? March. Earlier, later? I believe it's early March. Early seven March, days. second okay. week in March. I, um, only because a that J, J, I can't even read it now. JJH is oh, yeah. kind of new, even though it was a, a different version of it was may have been or was supposed to be attached to the one that is in existence. Yeah. And this policy for use of school facilities is now, even though it's all been, as it was in the past, now it's in writing. I would just want to give till the next meeting, just in case yeah. there's feedback or yeah. yep. suggestions. Makes sense. Cross talk. <laughs> no, sense. that sounds fair. It sounds like you now you can have it out there. People can read them right. on the agendas. And, Where's the hat? Um, it's on my paper. Uh -huh. Oh, no. And, and then we'll just vote on that in March. I mean, I don't have an issue with it, but just for that. I mean, we have time. Yeah. So it's not, you know, right? Is that yes. okay? Thank you. Yes. Okay. okay. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you for letting me explain all that. Thank you. Um, and thank you, Dr. Rav, for bringing all those forward. Um, so for old business, we have FY23 budget and articles. Dr. Rav, would you like to take that? Sure. Thank you very much. So we did find, unfortunately, in the budget that we voted in December, uh, there was a small rounding error. And so when the budget was put forward uh, to the town, in fact, a dollar, one dollar was added to our budget. And so I would just respectfully request for the sake of clarity that the school committee revote the budget tonight uh, with one additional dollar for $52,199,772 for FY23. Motion to approve the corrected adjusted amount of the uh, 2023 budget um, by $52,199,772 as opposed to $52,199,771. Thank you. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Dr. Rab, for that correction. Saving the day today. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of things. Um, anything with the article that you wanted to bring up? Uh, no, we have submitted uh, the backup data to the Finance Committee, and so we're ready to go. Okay. When did we submit that to the finance January committee? January 11th. January 11th. Wonderful. I'm looking forward to, to presenting to them. Are you Katie? No. <laughs> <laughs> you asked. Are you, are you Renita? Oh, I'm not asking anybody anything at the <laughs> table anymore. <laughs> okay. Um, other um, other matters. Does anybody have any other matters? I'm only kidding. I really love going with the finance committee. <laughs> Is that another matter? Yeah, that's another matter. Uh, <laughs> we need um, a long time to talk about it. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's true. Let me just look at... I think that that's it for other matters, right? Um, any correspondence? 
You're the one that gets all the correspondence. I know. I'm, I was, I was Don't stalling. <laughs> no, I, I, I think I might have gotten one. But yeah. Okay, let's go. Just going to double check if that's okay. Um, so we did the state theater. Oh, I did want to note that the president of the STA, the Stoughton Teachers Association, had noted on the calendar either or. Um, oh, you said that, that now email. after the vote. I would have made a big stink about it if I <laughs> no, <laughs> no, you wouldn't have. <laughs> okay. Um, I think that's all I have for correspondence. Um, and thank you, Dr. Rapp, for sending us the um, vaccination percentages on the Fridays. That's nice. Um, we, I know we started asking for those a while ago, and you've been providing them and giving us the updates. So we appreciate that. We appreciate um, the Director of Nursing, Ms. Gallen, for putting that together. It's a lot of work. The acceptance of the January 11, 2022 minute, meeting minutes are next. Any I make a motion to accept the minutes of January 11, 2022. Any discussion on that? No? Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Those are approved. Nicole. And then it looks like we have the thank you, Mary Shea. I know. Wait and see. These are so cute. The elementary calendars for all the elementary schools. We used to get these all so cute. Mm -hmm. It's nice to see that they're having the Hanson PTO sponsored glow dance. It's so nice with the Hanson. Oh, I, it, the hundred grade school is the tenth. I knew it was around here somewhere. Yes. This is this is wonderful. It's nice to see that the students are having activities in the buildings. Oh, this makes me happy. The elementary schools are always so, I mean, all the schools are so busy, but. Oh, the Gibbons, it looks like it says the 50th anniversary committee meeting. 50th anniversary, Katie? Gibbons? Excuse me, what are you trying to say? <laughs> well, you're a Gibbons, you used to be a Gibbons Griffin, right? Always, a, always one. <laughs> Black and white. Oh, that's nice. Very nice. Okay, so um, that would conclude this evening's meeting. Um, it's nice to see these calendars. Sorry, I, I was like, it's nice to look at those, peruse them. Um, so we are now going to adjourn. We will, our next meeting will be on March 8th, 2022. And now we will look for a motion to close the meeting. Motion to adjourn. Second. Wonderful, thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, everyone. Have a great evening. And again, congrats to the Project 351 acknowledgement.